Welcome to the Entrepreneur's Hangout podcast. I am here with a lovely, lovely woman, um, Elizabeth Duncan Hawker, and we are going to be talking about true collective friends. So I cannot wait. Elizabeth, please introduce your, yourself to all of our raving fans. Oh, good morning. Good evening, wherever you are, everyone. Kylie, thank you for having me here today. So Collecting True Friends is a movement. I'm on a movement to end loneliness. Nobody needs to grow old and not have enough quality friends in their lives. And your story and mine is just such a great example, because when we met through another networking group, yeah. I reached out, you reached back, you reached back, you reached, I reached to you and we were like, hey, you're super cool. Let's get to know each other more, right? And that is the actual action of collecting true friends. And I was divinely led to write this book and it is going into publication this month and it's very, very exciting. And my goal is, is to help men and women understand that just because you've had a life that maybe lacked enough of the great friendships in the past, or you've mm -hmm. lost them. I mean, if anybody's been like me, we've had people move away in our lives or unfortunately die. And uh, we, we want to make sure that we're replenishing more mm -hmm. friends into our life because you never know. I mean, they say some friendships are a reason for season and and, uh, and that's okay. But if you do it the right way, just like what you and I did, we reached out and said, Hey, I didn't know you. I think you're neat. There's something about you that aligns with me. Can we explore this? And I would say probably from my experience, about seven out of 10 times, what you'll find out is you do find out that you did make the good decision. Like this is a person you were supposed to, in what I call collect in your life. I like that. I like that. Well, Here. I've got a saying, which is like people meet for reasons. And I think I told you that even at the beginning. Right. It's like, you don't always know what that reason is like at that moment. Mm -hmm. But if you, if you are open to opportunities, possibilities, and have a really good positive attitude, that's the type of people that you collect and, 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 and attract to, you know? So I think that that's right. And that's like, when I said to you right away, I'm like, oh my gosh, we met for a reason. And, um, and I, I, I love that about you, uh, Elizabeth. I think that that is amazing. So tell Tell us a little bit more um, how the journey began with you, with where, with where you're at, the writing of the book, uh, the title. Just give us a little bit of some juicy background details. Oh, sure. So, so it's it's been an it's been an interesting journey because I actually came out of corporate America, and I know that sounds so trite. I've heard probably hundreds of people say that. I used to think that was a unique thing, Kylie. Like I would say, oh, well, I came from corporate, and then I realized, oh my gosh, it's like the whole world must be saying that, right? Um, <laughs> wait, wait, but, uh, stop yourself, because I everybody knows I did it. That's not one okay, of the things good, that so I, I said. That's that's awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what happened though, is I had been an employee and a director and a leader, senior leader for so long. I had never been an entrepreneur. That, did, that was not something that ran in my family. That was not something that, and, and here's this, here's the crazy part though, is if you go back 80 years in my grandfather's line, he actually was a top salesperson and ran his own insurance company. And then his father started the first Swedish newspaper in America. Oh, wow. So we, we came from entrepreneurs, but somewhere along the line, it was like, I grew up in a family where you either worked for the government or you worked for a business. So what happened is, is over decades, I kept working with, you know, pretty much the same group of people. But what I did learn is that I was always attracted to like the people that were traveling into our businesses. And uh, for example, vendors, vendors okay. turned out to be amazing people. So did consultants. So I became friends with people that were coming in to serve the company. Now, of course, you have to be very ethical. You mm -hmm. have to that you draw your lines and standards. But like once the project was done, just like with you and I are doing, it's like, hey, hey, can we get to know each other better I, now? I, I like you as a person. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Person. Can we go have a beer? Can we get, can we talk, can we get to know each other? Because what happens is when you bond with somebody, when you're doing a project and it could be, maybe you're volunteering at your local community. Mm -hmm. But when you, when you do something collectively towards a cause, whether it's a project in business or you're building your own company, but what happens is the people that become part of that circle, even though it may be temporary, mm -hmm. those you, you end up getting the no like, and trust built. And once you get no like, and trust built, it's pretty 
basic ladies and gentlemen, because it, it goes into, okay, do I like the person because right. because the like has to be enough that you can work with them right. but then the, but then if the like turns into hey this is a really cool person I don't want this person to leave my life so right. what happened is when I was in the corporate world I kept collecting more and more interesting people into my life and then when I left six years ago to become an entrepreneur and I started the Red Hawk Strategic Solutions and my business is I'm a consultant and I help people do growth then what I realized is I had to rebrand myself. So okay. I know on your Entrepreneurs Hangout podcast here, we love to talk about mentorship. Yeah. And so one of the things that I did though, is I reached back to all of those people that had mentored me so that I was able to rise through the corporate ranks for years oh, and that they it. supported me. And I reached back to thank them and to show them gratitude and say, hey, just so you don't think I've lost my ever loving mind because a lot of them did. Right. Because you know, if you've always been in business, yeah. working for someone else, and then somebody comes up and they go, hey, I'm going to go start being in my own business. They think like, what yeah. happened? Are right. you okay? Right, right. Like, did right. you get kicked out? <laughs> Is there something you're not telling us? <laughs> right. I mean, they never think that that's like the natural aggression, you know, succession in your life that you're supposed to like, okay, I'm evolving. Right. So I reached out to my mentors and I thanked him again profusely. And I'm like, I learned so much from you. And because of that, I took that and I did that. And then I also reached back to some of the people that I meant menteed yes. and said, Hey, if this is something you're interested in, I'll see you over here, but I'm over here on this side of the spectrum. Now I'm on the entrepreneur world. And, uh, but guess what? This is what happened though. When I started my own business mm -hmm. in 2016, Kylie, I had to start new. I had, oh, yeah, because it's a completely different hundred percent, hundred percent changed. Yeah. Whole circle changed. And I see, this is where a lot of people struggle is that in, and they always tell everybody never quit your day job. If you're mm -hmm. going to go be an entrepreneur until you have, until you've like communicated where you want to go, you have it lined up, you at least have a customer lined up. Right. So, and, and I would also tell people it's never do that until you have your identity clear in your head mm -hmm. that you are able to right. rebrand yourself. 100%. And with, um, yeah, that confidence to say, Hey, as I'm going over here, I still want to be friends with you. We were colleagues. I don't want to lose that, but can we not talk about that office I used right. to work in anymore? Cause I'm not interested in that, but right. would you like to come over here? And then you'd be surprised. People will start following you on social media and, and start accepting that you are a new person, a new mm -hmm. brand, and then they'll, they'll celebrate your success. Well, that brings up a good, a good point too, because um, for example, I'm a serial entrepreneur, right? And I, I love business. I love talking business. I love everything about business, right? But I also wear a lot of hats, right? I've always worn a lot of hats, everything from a commercial real estate agent to um, being an investor in the safari business, um, to, to being a coach to female entrepreneurs. That doesn't mean that I might not to, I might not be focusing on, hey, listen, I'm focusing right now at this moment on my real estate project. This is the hat that I wear. And people have got to get used to, that's okay. Kylie wears a lot of hats. Elizabeth might wear a lot of hats. And you've got to train them as to, I'm not saying what hat you're wearing that day, but what hat are you wearing? And, and that we're not crazy. Right. I mean, I think that's the biggest thing that, that I noticed is that when you're a very stable person and very successful and you, and in like, in my case, you know, I rose through the ranks, made great money. It's like, so in their mind's eye, it's like, why would you jump off of this airplane and take a parachute? Like, <laughs> this is the stupidest thing you've ever done. I mean, literally they were trying to talk me down. Like, do not put that parachute on. Do not yeah. jump. Out. What are you? We love you. Stay with us. <laughs> But okay, on the flip side, though, I got to tell you, and I, and I say this in the book I wrote, as I say, that's crab pot syndrome, because mm -hmm. some people that, and if you've ever, and I don't boil crabs, but I've seen what happens, <laughs> but you put, them in a, you put them in a pot, and then as the water gets hotter, then yeah. they start scaffolding to get yeah. out, okay? And yeah. the one that then pop, trying to pop out, the other ones will inevitably run up and grab that crab that's just about to pop out and pull them back in the bucket. <laughs> so, and if you don't have to be cooking them, I mean, they could just be fishing, right? <laughs> and it's like, no, you get back in here, 
You right. get back in here and you stay with Stay us. in the mud with us. Stay in here. What are you doing? Yeah. Don't, don't leave. It's scary out there. Yeah. So, um, so we have to realize that people have good intentions for us. But when it's time for us to leave, my brilliant mother taught me years ago, you have to know when it's time to leave the party. Bad things happen when you stay too long at the party. And when she whispered that to me, I didn't know what, like, what, what are you talking? What? what talk I'm not at a party, mom. I know. I, I get you. I get you everything in life I and mean, there's something so if if you've got listeners and and, and attendees right now that are they're tuning in and they're going you know i've been doing something so long but it's yes. not bringing me joy anymore or maybe i'm in a friendship yeah uh, or a networking group okay raise your hand anybody exactly. out there if how many people have yeah. like said i'm not renewing my whatever with the networking it's, you know what you're right elizabeth but what they've done is it's okay to say i've graduated it's yes. okay. It's okay to say, you know, it doesn't serve me anymore. I've moved up. I've moved on. I've grown. I've changed. Whatever the deal is, man, like own it so that you can benefit from it and grow from it. And, and don't hold other people back because here's, here's the thing that I think that sometimes, and I find, and I find I'll do it too, Kylie. It's not, <laughs> It's not just what people, you know, have jumped in trying to save me from jumping off the airplane, but I'll step up sometimes. And then I have to say, okay, is this the moment, Elizabeth, that you're supposed to be asking your friend or your colleague or your networking person or your neighbor or whoever's that's saying that they're going to go do this adventure or this venture? Is this the moment that I'm supposed to listen more and speak less and mm. try to understand? So ask, ask good questions like, well, what made you like, consider going in this right. direction tell yeah. me a little bit more about why in your heart this is where you want to go because that's what we're supposed to do as good yes. human beings on this earth is that is is find out because it may be you know what that we don't have any perspective mm. and this person is exactly supposed to move on they're supposed to not stay uh, but I think it's a position of fear that we all face that when we're the one that's being left behind, someone's leaving the office, oh, sure. but it's leaving the environment. Someone's moving out of state. Mm -hmm. We don't know if we'll see that friend anymore. I, I think we're the person that thinks, wow, everything's changing now. Yeah. And then we get it. So it becomes me, 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 instead of saying, okay, I need, I need to think, like, ask this person some good questions because our questions can make them think through their thoughts a little bit sure. deeper. I've done that, but it's, I think our first reaction is we're being left behind. And it's not, it's not good. It's yeah, I would tend to, I, I would tend to agree with you. So I am a military brat, right? And I grew up in a very, very chaotic family. Um, and I, so some of my sisters and brothers did really well with it. I did. I loved it. I was like, oh, great. Every two years, I <laughs> change who I am. Like, you know, new school, new person. So I dealt with the whole change thing very well. But um, it's kind of interesting that some people don't. And some people have the same group of friends, nothing wrong with that They're, by any means. Hey, you got to do what's good for you, you know? But also I've had change, like adult friends now, like I'm an adult, of course. And I've had adult friends um, that live all over the place and they we've moved and we've changed and it feels a little you know, a little sticky, kind of scary, a little bit like, you know, what's going to happen with that friendship, but true friends figure out a way to make it work. Absolutely. And that's, that's why I called it collecting true friends, because you know what, when we were five or six years old and somebody would do something that was just incredible, like maybe we fell off our bike and, and this is a true story for me. And like <laughs> Michael put me on his bike and walked me home when my knees were bleeding and everything. And I remember my other friend going, well, he's a true friend, right? Oh, and we knew, back then, we knew back then that we, who true friends were, or we would just say, well, don't worry about that. They're not a true friend. I mean, so if we're a kid and we can identify who's a true friend, we need to be able to move that forward and ask ourselves, you know, if this person wants something different, am I, am I being a good true friend with, right. with, with being open to at least hear them out and not start telling them, I hate it when people should us. Yeah, should, yeah, 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 yeah. You should have done, should have done. How about this one? You just need to, I hate <laughs> that one. I'm like, don't tell me what I need. <laughs> when I was a military brat too. So in the book, uh -huh. I actually call myself the little Viking. Okay, I like it. 
because with the red hair and the blue eyes and then being as pale as I can, I would, I would land in a new city and they'd look at me and go, really? You don't look like anything. What did you come over from like another country? Like, what are you? So that's funny. That's what the people in Virginia said about me when I got here to Culpeper. Oh, <laughs> like, like, I know, but that, this is hilarious. This is the truth. Cause I am different. Right. Yeah. And they're like, they're like, you're not from here. Are you? I'm like, no, I'm not. What, what made you think of that, right? You know, I want to ask you, though, this is kind of a funny thing about um, talking about um, friends, because friends also have to deal with conflict, yes. right? And I know friendships in my, in my world, you know, if you don't have a little bit of conflict within your friends, I wonder how deep they are, because if you're a friend long enough, 25 years, I'm just saying, like, if there's a friendship that's long enough and deep enough, you know that you're going to have a little bit of conflict. You're not always going to agree with each other. I'm not always going to think, hey, Elizabeth, that was a swell idea. It doesn't mean that I need to project on you, but it means that we don't, we can disagree that we're not going to agree on everything. And you got to figure out a way to handle that conflict and, and come out and be your true authentic self with your friend. Exactly. Exactly. And it, did you have a specific thought on that or because we can well, go? I just, I just love, no, no. And I just love that. Um, it just brought up like thoughts of how you communicate with your friends, you know, mm -hmm. and, and what that whole true friend is. Hey everyone. If you're enjoying the entrepreneurs hangout podcast, please like love, subscribe and share me. Don't forget to hit the notification buttons. Bye for now. One of the biggest questions that I keep getting in over when, when I wrote Collecting True Friends, and now we're on Clubhouse and we're, we're having all sorts of discussions. So I welcome anybody to, to find me there. And I'm the Red Hawk on Clubhouse and, and come on in and ask questions. And one of the ones that I noticed that keeps coming up over and over, Kylie, is what do I do if a friend disappoints me? What, if, what if I expected one thing, they did something differently because that, and that's my words, not theirs. What they usually say is, what do I do if somebody is, is, is I'm not getting along with them. Like you talked about the conflict and then yeah. we get to, okay, well, where was the conflict coming from? And usually it's from a disappointment. Usually it's, I thought they would do this, or I thought they would say that, or I was hurting or I needed this and they were oblivious so usually disappointment seems to be like a big theme that keeps coming up, right? Especially right now with the pandemic. Yeah. Because what, what happened with a lot of people's circles is they were hurting and then they didn't hear anything from anybody. Like this is, this is their words, not mine. Sure. And I'm thinking, well, somebody must have checked in with you somewhere. And they're like, nope, nope, just no, all my friends, you know? And, yeah. and um, so in their world, that, that just signals when people say things to us, it's like, that means, okay, they felt abandoned. Mm -hmm. Social isolation was what they felt like they were suffering with. And some of it starts with something as simple as if they're feeling there's a conflict, it could be that it's from a disappointment. And if they can peel back to go, okay, have they done something that really made me angry? Or is it because right. they didn't do something that then I'm upset about? And do they even know that I expected something to be done, right? Mm -hmm. So for example, one, one of my uh, girlfriends was, and you know, as I've been going through the, the woes and throws and highs and lows of, of getting this book written and published and, and out here is um, she was having something else going on and everything. Well, she called me on a day and it was like, I was busy with the editor. I've got the yeah. publisher. We're reviewing the book cover. I mean, it was like, I was up to my eyeballs floating for about two weeks. It was like, I couldn't even breathe. Right. I finally had to look at her and I said, do you realize how big of a deal this is in my life right now? I'm really sorry that this is happening to you, but I'm trying to give you attention. And it was almost like I could see in her mind. And, she, and then she goes, well, of course I do. But then I realized it was like, mm, you didn't. And it, But if I had not said that to her and reminded her, and God bless her, she was so sweet, you know, and then she followed up later, you know, and it was all mushy and everything. And that wasn't why I said that, but it was just like, I was letting her know, I was giving her a social clue, like I'm on overload and I, I can't, I can't address or help right. you with anything like that right now. So, you know, this is where I'm at. And that's where I think we can avoid conflict is if we, is if we were vulnerable and I mm -hmm. hate that word. But it's just a, it's just an overused word, which means being transparent. I like the word transparent better. I like and if, that. 
And if we do that with our spouses, if we do that with our, our children, if we do that with you know our loved ones, our friends, our coworkers, our bosses, I mean, they tell you for years, they say, tell your boss, I can't put anything else on my plate. Which one of the, remember this stupid expression, which one of the things should I take off the plate because you want me to put, it was like, okay, they, they yeah. taught us that to, to be transparent for years, but we right. don't do that in our social world enough. And then we get bruised. Then mm -hmm. we get disappointed. We, we feel conflict. And I got to tell you, there's a lot of times that I have felt like, I really screwed something up. So I want your listeners to really listen to this because this is this is in the book and I and I put this in there because there were times I was like, oh my gosh, I just feel so dreadful and I was so embarrassed and I thought I really said so, I shouldn't have said that. Oh, it was so insensitive of me. And then I'll circle back. Right. Okay. And they're like, what are you talking about? <laughs> yeah. What? When you did what? And for like two days, I held that heavy on my right. heart, like thinking right. I've been a terrible person. So my point is here is sometimes if the other person didn't pick up on what you thought was really bad, they may also not have picked up on when they acted like a jerk Correct. and you're thinking they did act like the jerk. So sometimes we don't know unless we say, so it's better just to go ahead and say, was I too direct or, or did I not get that you were like with the book thing? Right. Did I not? Yet that you were going through like a major thing in your life and and um was there something you needed from me and a lot of times Kylie all they just need is just know they've been heard right and and that will avoid the conflict or disappointment or and and I gotta I gotta tell you though I loved your comment when you said you know friendships a real friendship can't get deeper if you don't have some conflict because right. it's true because what happens is then it just stays here in superficial land right it's like and i call those or what was the term that they used to use years ago a uh, fair weather friends yes yeah so they're just yeah. your friend, and, and it's okay we fair weather 100 100 neighbors right. are great to, i mean you don't sometimes you know if they live really close by they can be wonderful neighbors but they're fair weather friends to come and help you if you're in need right. but they're not they're not going to be the person you're going to have dinner with a lot correct you know and 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 call up when some when something's really bad because you know it's just the uh, love exactly the and it's i i want to do uh i want to i want to circle back on around something where you said sure. you know where you like you do business in my in my opinion you do business with people Actually, I'm even going to step it up a bit. You actually surround yourself. You do business and your friends with people that you like, trust, and 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 um, associate with. You know that you have something in common. And as a little girl, so my father was my mentor. He was an entrepreneur. He was a self-made military man and a home builder. And um, his our subs called him Uncle Lloyd, right? And Uncle Lloyd did not do business with you if you did not sit down to get to know him, right? That's building a relationship. And I learned that very early on. The subs were always with us. I mean, I, I spent my whole entire life with them. And uh, on Friday, now this was like back in the old school days where Uncle Lloyd, if he wasn't in town, he would put a check in the door. You came to pick it up. If he was in town, you went and had coffee with Uncle Lloyd and you talked about the kids and about you. And, and, and if you didn't give him the time or day, or if you weren't that, it, it just wasn't, you weren't going to do business with him. Yeah. I love that. I love that. It was like, okay, if the check's there, you can pick it up, but if not, you, yeah. so that's a really good point. So that, and that sounds to me like a nurturer. So in some of, some of the skills that I teach, I do like personality uh, assessments. So when I, when I'm very active teaching professional networking and how we build referrals and sales. And when I do that, Kylie, I have to get the attendees to understand what kind of style they are, because some people are very, and it's beyond introvert, extrovert, but some people are very direct and they don't understand when they're talking to someone who, what I call, for example, is a nurturer. And it sounds like uncle Lloyd was with, you need to have a conversation I got to know how you're feeling. You didn't ask me about my family. And now you want to go right down to the brass tack. <laughs> it's like, okay. And in their world, that's really rude. But if you're dealing with somebody who's, who's, um, and we use different terms and so the, the, for example, the term would be like a blueprint, but okay. if there's a blueprint person and those are a lot of your CPAs and your financial people and stuff, they're like, Oh dear God, could they please shut up and get to the point? So when so when I teach networking, right, or I'm teaching people on how to get more friends, 
it's super important to read what the person expects with this. So if you're going to go see an Uncle Lloyd type person, yep. listeners and attendees on this wonderful show today, <laughs> allow more time in your schedule. Don't make that like, well, I'm just running in and then I've got to pick this up and good to yep. see you, Lloyd. You need to know, okay, that's a 15 minute visit because right. he's, because it's rude if you don't. Okay. So <laughs> Do the right thing. And, and it may be that, you know, you have another friend who's just like, get to the facts. Have you ever heard two men talk? Yes. And yeah, yeah, yeah. They haven't talked in like, like a year. Yeah. And you're like, well, how's this family? Good. Good. Well, well how's everybody doing? Fine. Good. I'm like, well, how do you know? <laughs> and I'm like, because I asked him how his family was and he said, fine. Right. And I'm like, well, what's been going on? Who graduated? Who got married? Well, I don't yeah. know, but we're all doing good. It's like, <laughs> so, you know, so tight. I think you're right though. And that's not necessarily a man or woman. That's just, you're right. That's like a, the personality. I love the fact that you, you know, I love the personality. I'm not going to say tests and stuff, but I, I, I think that's amazing. That's awesome. Elizabeth. Yeah. And it's, it, it's just meeting people where they are. So, so for example, I know, be, you know, pre pandemic, there were a lot of people that like to hug mm -hmm. and there was a lot of us out there that were just like, I don't know you well enough. And mm -hmm. see, I came from the corporate world, like I said, before I did the entrepreneurial world. And it was always a handshake with me because I was keeping particularly a lot of the vendors and people that were sure. not part of our business. I had to keep them at a business distance. Mm -hmm. And also I was a young, beautiful woman. So it was like, okay, this is, this is my, I've got two feet with my arm. I'm holding out for those that can't see it. Right. So, <laughs> so I was never the huggy type and stuff. So it's interesting how that, that, you know, we have to realize right now, the ones that, that are missing the hug. And I gave, I gave one of my friends I hadn't seen in over a year. I got to finally see her Sunday. She, she actually held a little jewelry party. And um, I mean, we, we hugged like two cats yeah, that, had, that's that hadn't been together. And then it was funny because another friend came up that we mutually know and we were hugging in a circle. And I said, oh my gosh, we're like little kitty cats, like manushing one another. That's but it, you could see this, the, the social connection of the energy, even though we've been texting, we've been Marco Poloing, yeah. we've been staying in contact. So I got to tell you, so the human touch is still something that we're not getting it through Zoom. And, and I think when um, you and I first talked about doing this podcast, I told you the studies are showing that the loneliness is equivalent to smoking 15 cigarettes a day. That's the impact on our body. So reach out to somebody you know that you haven't. Go through your text. That's, I, I love that one. If you, I, do you keep your texts? I keep like texts. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So go back, like go a hundred texts deep and go and see who you talked to six months ago or something. And then reach out to them and say, Hey, I'm, you know, haven't talked to them a while. Just checking in. I'm thinking of you. Yeah. You, I'm thinking of you. you don't, you're not asking anything. Don't say, you know, will you host this or, you know, but just say no. I'm thinking of you. And I got to tell you, because people are lonely right now, even yes. extroverts and us that have businesses and, and, and like you with big, you're a serial entrepreneur and all your different <laughs> brands, but we want to hear from the people that we did know, like, and trust earlier. And it would mean the world to them. If you just took five minutes and just reached out and just said, Hey, and then, you know what, here's the cool part. One of my friends that I used to work with has moved down to Florida. Okay. She's up here to see her daughter. And we had to rework the schedule like three times, but I was bound and determined to see her. And I got to see her this weekend. Kylie, uh -huh. we started a conversation and we're over in the corner giggling and laughing like, like college girls to the point that then somebody came over and said, we're going to have to break you two up. Like you're, yeah. In. <laughs> yeah. but my point is you yes. can have true friends. And even though I hadn't seen her in person for six years, mm -hmm. We took it right back up. And now yep. she's like, you need to come down to Florida. Yep. You need to come stay with us. Bring your dog, bring your husband. Um, I think she actually said, bring my husband, bring my dog. Sure. I heard, I heard, bring my dog, bring my husband. I, I, love, I, love, I love my husband, but anytime <laughs> he can go everywhere, right? My dog can't go everywhere with me. So yeah, yeah. that's good. That's good. So Elizabeth, I know what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, giving all of the listeners your links um, to your book to your, um, your group, Red Hawk, um, yes. before we leave, I just want to say, like, if you were talking 
to, um, because I think our um, ideal client avatar, our ICAs are relatively the same. Perhaps um, a woman that is, Maybe, you know, she is ready to leave the corporate world, go into her own business, or maybe still in corporate, you know, trying to figure out what that pivot is. Um, Personality-wise and stuff, what advice would you give? What would, what, what would you say? What oh, would you say to her? I am so glad you're asking this question because the, there's nothing more painful for me than when I show up at a networking event or... I'm talking to someone and then they say, yeah, I started my business two years ago and it's not going well. Mm -hmm. My advice would be just like I did before you leave, get your LinkedIn busy, your profiles loaded, get a beautiful headshot of yourself. You do not have to hire a photographer. Just make sure that they, because our phones nowadays have such great pixels on them, but make sure your lighting's right. Get your, fix your face, do a beautiful image uh, and make sure that your social media is reflecting something that somebody's going to want to talk to you because I've got news for you before you become a private person on the entrepreneur side, people are going to go back and look at you on social media to see if they want to even do business with you. And I have seen more people make mistakes on that. They did never, they never cleaned up their social media Mm -hmm. or restricted it. So they didn't clean up that side. And then when they show up, they also hadn't really thought through, well, what are you good at? Right. It's like, okay, and and have you, do you have some results? Because keep in mind, the people that come out of that world, what's the first thing we look for? Data. Sure. So what sure. are your numbers? Who can you help? Mm-hmm. Give me your success story. And, that's, uh, and here's another piece of advice I give you too, is don't be surprised that when people that are in the entrepreneur world or, or have been very successful, they start congratulating you and, and, and you're coming out of a world with, because I actually did a speech on this called Mm -hmm. going from being a W2 to a 1099. Okay. The leap of faith, because what's really weird is they will congratulate you for starting a business. And I'm thinking it was $50. You filed an LLC. I do not get why you're congratulating me. So, so Honor that somebody's excited about what you're doing and ask them, hey, you're really successful at this. What do you recommend? Like three top things I do. And Mm -hmm. what, and you may say, okay, did that one, did that? Oh, never heard of that one. So start asking the people that are successful because those are the ones that you want to emulate. And please, I'm going to say this as my closing comment, do not burn any bridges. No, No, never know. If it's the secretary who's the gatekeeper that gets you the appointment with the president uh, to get that new contract, or if it's the person that you hired 20 years ago that then now Mm -hmm. took your position over somewhere that you're going to reach back to and say, hey, can you give me a recommendation? We need recommendations. We need referrals. And people are going to vet us, Kylie. And when we yes. When we're not prepared for that, people are going to ask about us Yep. and think about it. We do that anyhow. Hopefully we do that with friends and family and everything. It's like, Hey, what do you, why do you like Sue? Or tell me, how'd you meet John? Right. It's social edification. So make sure your social edification is on mark as well as making sure you have the real deal. Mm. Do not start a business. If you think you just love doing something, but you're not really amazing at it. Well, and that's called a passion. You know, I so love it. Like, exactly. <laughs> there's a difference between a passion, you know, maybe supporting a nonprofit or whatever it is, but business is business. And um, one quickie little thing too about also having your like what it is that you who you help and what you do, you know, especially because of the pandemic, you really have to look at that on an annual basis, if not, because it could slightly change it could slightly change. We're not going to, don't, I mean, we cannot stand here today to say, oh, you know, nothing with COVID, nothing changed, right? No, but who you're helping and how you're helping them might change. Your business is slightly going to be a little bit different. You have to acknowledge that and step it up, you know, change, modify your website, your social media, who it is that you help, your help. This is who I help talk, you know, I hate to say 30 second speech, but you know what I'm saying? The elevator pitch. Yeah. So absolutely, absolutely. So, yeah. okay, before be we go. Flexible. Please be flexible. Cause where yes. you say may not be where you're at in two years. I, I, I'm hearing what you say. And that's exactly what happened with me. Excellent. 
I want to say, um, now I know you don't have a copy of your book, so show up, brag on your book, baby. Yeah. So collecting true is, is the website. We will be on Amazon shortly. For those of you that are looking at it, there's the image. And I'd like to point out that the reason why down at the bottom, the people are dancing and there's men and women there is because if you do it right, that's what can happen in your life. It's a celebration and you're happy. And when we get together, right? And friends hear music, right. don't we start moving right a little bit? No so, that, that, so that was the actual image. And it was funny because one of my friends, Spanish friends from Valencia, new friend, she shows up with DJ equipment in my backyard while they're making <laughs> paella. Like I'm thinking, wow, I've hit the jackpot, right? They cook yeah. and they bring music. Well, and we're all dancing and That's then there fun. were some pictures and then that was the inspiration for the book cover because you I want know. to be with people that just bring joy in your life. It doesn't have to be a hundred percent all the time, but no. if they they have to bring you joy and you have to bring joy to them. And that's what life's about. Thanks for having me today. Candy. I love it. I love it. And um, I'll see you on Thursday. Yes, in I, can't, I can't wait. It's coming I know. up. You got it. We're going to go I'll celebrate, dance, and maybe whoop. drink a little bit. Whoop, that's whoop. right. That's right. We'll, we'll get all our friends together. So, and I wanted to tell you, October 19th is make a new friend day. Oh, so if, if you awesome. don't know that, put it on your calendar and make it a personal goal. I'm going to do it today. Thank <laughs> you, Elizabeth. It was awesome getting to, um, getting to, for, for my listeners to hear more about you. I can't wait to help celebrate you. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Thanks. Bye for now. Hey everyone, thanks for joining us with the Entrepreneur's Hangout. If you love us, come join us on Facebook with Entrepreneur's Hangout Facebook group. It's where entrepreneurs go to collaborate and grow.